Now it's time to bring back my co-host, Jeff Small, and also our good friend and guest, Michael Easton, founder and president of Fellowship Financial Group outside of Orlando, Florida. Michael is the best-selling author of the book, Common Sense Income Strategies, and he's also the host of the Retirement Income Radio Show. Michael, thanks so much for being here with us today. It's always a pleasure, guys. Thanks so much for having me. So you heard me just say that I personally believe the biggest problem with variable annuities is that when people, when advisors try to take a, a tool designed for the accumulation phase of your life and jury rig it into a tool they try to make work for the income phase of your life. Do you concur? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I mean, if, you, if you're looking for long term, you're younger, then maybe you can take some of that risk. Here's a couple of the problems that I find with, uh, with variable annuities is <clears throat> what I've found is that wholesalers and brokers, they sell the sizzle on those variable annuities, regardless who's buying them. And if, uh, if you think about it, it's kind of like when you cook sausage. I mean, it's, it sounds good when it's in the pan. It smells good. But, you know, as well as I do, too much sausage is probably not the best thing for you. But, uh, you know, variable annuities can be very similar. So that's one problem. A second problem is that unfortunately, most consumers and really financial advisors don't understand them as well. And, and I know this because I talk to them, I ask questions and it can be very, uh, uh, it's, it's, criti it's, it's critical, they don't understand them. Um, and then of course the costs and fees, I don't know whether you touched on that too much, but uh, there are a lot of fees. Uh, to get all the bells and whistles that you need, it can cost three to 5%. So if you think about putting $100,000 into an annuity, uh, and you're, you know, you could pay fifty thousand dollars in fees over the life of that contract. But the insurance benefits from that, the insurance company itself benefits, not you. So it makes it hard to really get any growth. And then the final one that I think about is the fact that, you know, you have a false sense of security. Variable annuities are invested in the stock market, so your principal can lose value. And people don't realize this. They buy variable annuities because they think that they're safe. And see, to take your sausage analogy a step further, you never want to watch how the sausage is getting made. If you did, you'd probably never have sausage. And in the variable annuity world, that's reading that 100 page plus prospectus. And I think if, if most investors did read the prospectus, they might know this and they might actually decide, ooh, I want to stay away. But it's so lengthy that most people, unfortunately, don't take the time to do it. Jeff? Yeah, the false sense of security is really, really big that Mike had just touched on. And I think people don't understand it, but what the false sense of security circumvents, and, and Michael probably concur on this, is that if they're getting income from this that's guaranteed, it's really income that is they're paying themselves back with their own money. The, the annuity company, the insurance company doesn't pay them any money out of their pocket. It comes out of the account value. And simultaneously, while they're creating that guaranteed lifetime income that they're paying back with their own account, they're being charged those same fee range of three to five percent. Right, Mike? Yeah, that's right. I mean, the insurance company benefits with all of the fees and uh, you don't as an individual. So that's what makes it really hard for consumers to get growth. Although most of the time they think that that's what they're entering into. They think that they're going to get some growth, but they have get some guarantees. And that false sense of security is kind of what wraps that whole concern. Yeah. And Michael, you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, most people probably wouldn't buy the annuity if they realized that that lifetime income, let's say, is 5% of the balance to the investor, but yet the insurance company is taking 3 or 4%. The insurance company is getting almost as, money, as much money as they are, correct? That's right. And that's why I said, you know, if, if, if I gave you an, op an opportunity to give me, invest $100,000, and I told you that over 10 years, it's going to cost you $50,000 in fees, I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you, you're probably not going to invest in that vehicle, correct? Of course well, yeah. not. Yeah. 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 There, I mean, I've asked that question a million times to people. Would you have bought this product had you known you had these fees? And they say, they all say no. I mean, that's, that's, you know, we got about 30 seconds left, Mike. So what do you want to add to that? And that, that really goes to the point that I made initially, which is most consumers and unfortunately most financial advisors, I choose to believe just don't understand them. Again, it comes down to the, the fact that I talk to people all the time about these things. Whenever someone comes in with a variable annuity, it's very rare that they really understand what they've got and how it works. Very rare. And after the commercial break, I want to talk about why that is. So you stay with us. We have much more coming up from Michael Easton right here on The Income Generation. We'll be right back.
Now it's time to welcome back my co-host Jeff Small, as well as our good friend Michael Easton. So, so Michael, you know, Jeff had talked about before the break the the, the concern, not just about being misleading, but also the fact that in many ways the, the insurance company, especially with variable annuities, is giving you back your own principal. Um, but why is that a bigger issue with variable annuities? Uh, you know, than it is with other types of annuities? Well, the reason that's a problem is because of the fact that when you're invested in a variable annuity, it's similar to, it's, a, it's basically a mutual fund that has an insurance wrapper around it. So when you liquidate money, when you take money out of that account, then you're actually selling shares. You're selling shares of what's called the sub accounts. And those sub accounts are basically the insurance company's name for a mutual fund. And no different from um, buying and selling a mutual fund, if you need income and the value of that mutual fund is down, well, then you have to sell more shares when the market's down to get the same amount of income as you would when the market is up. That can, be, uh, that can, that can destroy your principal way too soon, especially if you're in the, the go-go years of your retirement. So, Michael, you know, I said before that there was a, a, you know, the place I think variable annuities could fit is with younger investors who want tax deferral and risk. But do you see any place that a retiree taking income could benefit from variable annuities at all? Well, look, my general, my general response to that would be not really. But, uh, but you know, if you don't need the money, if you're trying to, to uh, leave it as a legacy, if, it, if it's qualified money in a variable, variable annuity, then you could just let it ride for many, many years. The, the only problem that I have there is that you're still incurring those fees. And depending on when you die, then it may have a, a more negative or, or more positive impact on, your, uh, on the balance that you hand off to your beneficiary. So generally, I'd say no. Yeah, and, and, and just for viewers and listeners, on a non-IRA uh, annuity, what's called non-qualified annuity, it's even worse because it's taxed more heavily at death. And right. Michael, I think that's why you made a point of saying uh, for IRA. a qualified annuity. Uh, that's right. Jeff? So, spoken like a true CPA, giving some unique tax perspective on the tax deferral of an annuity, Mike. And I, I swear, you, can, you know, I've, I've got to tell the audience, we, you are, they are listening to a CPA's perspective. But now that we've really beaten up variable annuities and we've really beaten them up, there is a silver lining and a good side to a select group of annuities, Michael, and you and I have experienced that both with our clients. And so why don't you share some of your unique perspectives on why consumers might want to consider an annuity and how a good advisor marries that client's objective to an annuity that, that, it is, that fits into the realm of what the client wants, which is usually accumulation or guaranteed income or safety. So why don't you tell us what your experiences have been in that regard? Yeah, thanks, Jeff. And, and I think you hit on it a minute ago, just on the, the importance of uh, a good advisor. And a good advisor starts with somebody who's an independent fiduciary. That means that they're, they're professionally obligated to look out for the best interests of their client. That means that they're going to look at all options that are on the table. And so you're not going to just look at any one product. So uh, uh, there are certain types of annuities, whether they be fixed annuities or indexed annuities with income riders that give you guarantees, or even uh, immediate annuities that give you lifetime pension-like income uh, that can have a good place as a, as a part of an overall income plan. Uh, because these things provide guarantees, they provide growth for income purposes, and then they can provide guaranteed income at some point in the future, whether it's 12 months from now or 10 years from now, it's really, there's a lot of flexibility that exists in those types of products. And as a part of a, of a well-rounded, well-thought-out income plan, they can, they can fit a very good role for, for a number of different clients that are looking for the guarantees. But prototypically, Michael, and we've got about a minute 15 left, prototypically, what does your prototypical um, client want that's desirable from an annuity that you can make that connection as your, your average annuity client, what is the, the reason why they want that annuity? What, you know, how, do you, how do you correlate those benefits to the client's objectives? Sure, the reason that, uh, that my clients want to use the uh, particular type of annuity is because they want a layer of guaranteed income on top of social security. We're usually trying to fit, fill a gap. We're trying to fill a gap between social security and what they, can, they, what they want to have for income 
so they can satisfy their retirement goals and dreams, the things that they've worked for their entire life. And so we'll use a, an, in, an annuity with an income guarantee to, to fill that layer above social security before we get to things that are not guaranteed that can pay interest and dividends. Yeah, and the reality of it is, you know, with some of those other annuities you mentioned, they may still be spending down some principal, um, but you don't have to worry about spending principal, spending twice as much when the market drops, and you sure don't have to worry about some insurance company taking a three, four percent fee. Um, right. People are willing to pay fees, but three, four percent is usury. So, uh, Michael, as usual, it's been our pleasure having you back on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much. My pleasure. You stay with us. We have more to come right here on the Income Generation. We'll be right back.